hello, welcome to Spot Level Worsting. Today's Thursday, February 9th, 14th, 2019. I'm your host, If, and today I'm here with Katie Sharon Lopez, and she's from the Eat Smart New York, right? That's right. All right. <laughs> Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Yes, yeah, so I'm from the Eat Smart New York program at Cornell Cooperative Extension of Ulster County. All right, so where is, ah, forget that. Uh, isn't February also the Heart Health Month? Yes, so February is Heart Health Month, and we're actually here on Valentine's Day, so it's a perfect day to talk about heart health. Um, and Eat Smart New York is a statewide program that operates in pretty much every county around the state, and we are funded from um, SNAP Education uh, through the USDA. So what we do is we aim to educate low-income people all over the state, really anyone, about healthy eating and physical activity. So um, where I work in Ulster County, I spend a lot of time in Kingston and in Ellenville um, doing education all over the place. And since it's Heart Health Month, I will um, talk a little bit about this My Plate image right here. Have you seen this before? I think so, like more in the school lunch menus. They'll show like a, a proportion of what's good for you. Yes, exactly. And actually the school lunch and breakfast program is based on this a lot. So the you know meal is make sure it fits different categories. But it's not just for school lunch or school breakfast, it's really just kind of a guide for how we should all eat every day. So one of the big takeaways from this is that we have everything divided up into our food groups, there's five food groups, and half of the plate, or half of what we should eat every day, is fruits and vegetables. So have you heard that before? Yes, mostly from my mother. Okay. Great. <laughs> so do you think you eat half of your uh, food every day in fruits and vegetables? Honestly, no. Probably not, right? Mostly fruits. Mostly fruits? Okay. Well, that's good. But most people in general, and it's a combination, right? And we don't want to split hairs too much about like what's a fruit, what's a vegetable, everyone always asks. But um, most people are not getting enough of their food from the fruit and vegetable groups. Probably a lot of us are getting mostly grains or mostly protein or you know, just kind of out of balance, right? So one of the things we wanna to do to keep our hearts healthy is eat a lot of fruits and vegetables because they have a lot of fiber in them. They're really high in vitamins and minerals and they're low in saturated fat, sodium, and added sugar. But eating healthy stuff is expensive. How could we eat healthy stuff and stay on a budget? <clears throat> That's a really good question um, because it is. It can be healthy, or it can be expensive. Excuse me, but it doesn't always have to be. So one of the keys when you are trying to eat healthy is to uh, try to prepare as much of your food as possible, and it does take a little bit of time. But there are a lot of shortcuts that we can take, and I'm actually going to be showing you a recipe today that's pretty quick and easy, but it's really heart healthy. It has a lot of fiber. Um, not too much added sodium, and it's really tasty, which is also really important. So a lot of people don't eat their fruits and vegetables because they don't like them. And so we want, I want everyone to enjoy their food. Eating should be a really right. enjoyable part of the day because we do it all, pretty much all day, every day. You can't not eat food. Eat, so we, sleep, repeat, am I right? Eat, yes. <laughs> That's great. Eat, sleep, repeat, and I would squeeze in a little physical activity into that um, okay. cycle. But sleep is important, very underrated also. And when you don't sleep enough, it's easy to make bad decisions about food and eating unhealthy food. So, so yeah, that's really important. Um, yeah, so we want to um, make sure we're enjoying what we eat. But it does not have to be expensive or complicated. One of the keys is really planning ahead and making sure you know where um, you're getting uh, you know, low cost food from. And in the Ellenville area, it could be a lot of places. There are, um, you know, we have shop right here, we have the farm stands that are operating in season, and there's also a bunch of different food pantries around the community. And actually, I wanted to also mention that since, um, because of the government shutdown that happened in January, uh, families or individuals that are receiving SNAP, which is also known as food stamps, they receive benefits earlier than they normally would. So they receive them in January, which means now they're not getting them again until um, as late as the 10th or th even 13th of March. So there's this really, really long gap of time over a month, almost a month and a half, where, um, you know, 
there's no income coming in for food necessarily. So these families are really, really stretched. So I wanted to make sure that people know that if they are struggling, if their benefits have run out already, because it's halfway through the month now, that we know where the food pantries are. So if you could put the list of the, the food pantries on the screen. I have two different places that I would, wanted to point people towards. This um, family of Woodstock and Community Action. And of course, there are a couple of other food pantries around the community. But um, these are the two that have the most hours and the most available, like the most um, times they're open. Okay, so we're stuck here. Uh, technical difficulty. That's okay. We can come back to it. I just want to make sure that people know that there are resources around. That you, you know, for the most part, you don't have to show, you know, proof of income. You don't have to show a bunch of paperwork. You go and there's food there you know, for you to take home and prepare. And they do have a big focus on healthy food. So one's on Center Street, one's on Canal Street. They're right here in the middle of town. So um, where could people go if they want to learn more about cooking and healthy eating? Well, if people want to learn about cooking and healthy eating, I'm here to show you a recipe. Um, Eat Smart New York, one of our big goals in the way I spend a lot of my time is to um, to do education in the community. So in Ellenville, I will be doing um, probably a series at Ellenville Regional Hospital in, I wanna say March or April. It's still TBA, but people can um, kind of keep their eye out for announcements going on about that. And also every Thursday morning at the Ellenville Public Library, there's a group called Living Well Ellenville. And at 10 o'clock, um, the group meets and goes for a walk around town and then from 10.30 to 11.30, there's some kind of workshop about health. So it's not always about food, um, but when I come, it is about food or physical activity. So I'll do um, you know, a workshop where we talk about how to read the food label, how to reduce sodium, different things like that. So there's a couple of different resources, and there's also a couple of classes coming up at the Ellenville Library. Um, oh, here we go. So here's the family of Ellenville and Community Action their locations, if people don't know where they are, and their phone numbers. So I would encourage people to call ahead, find out when they're open, what they have available. Um, but these are places you can go to get food. Um, and then if we could show the flyer that has the information about, not that one. Next, yeah, this one, okay. So this is a cooking club that's going to be happening. There are three more dates here in Ellenville. They're all at the Ellenville Library. Um, and so this is, free and open to the public, but it's really just focused on cooking skills. So the next one in March is about soup. And then the one in April is about whole, the April 11th, sorry, is whole grains. And April 25th is called Get the Skinny on Fat. So I will not be teaching these. Someone else from Cornell Cooperative Extension will teach them. But this would be a great way if someone's not very comfortable cooking or feels like they don't know how to cook. It's just kind of covering the basics of how to make different recipes. All ends, there's always YouTube. And there's always YouTube, that's right. There is always YouTube, which is a great resource because you can literally watch it anytime, pause it. But I think coming to classes in person is great too because you have a yeah. chance to ask questions and taste the recipe, which that is too. very important. Well, according to my script, we're supposed to be demoing a Greek chickpea salad. Yes, okay, so we have a nice healthy recipe here today. I'm going to so this is the nutrition facts. Um, if we can go to the recipe part. All right, so Greek chickpea salad, which is very similar to tabbouleh, if you've ever had tabbouleh. Never. Never in your life, okay, perfect. So this will be something new and different. And so if, are you willing to help me prepare this recipe? Why not? Okay, do you cook at home? Yes, mainly for myself. Great. Alright, so I'm going to give you some gloves. So my hands are nicely washed, I don't feel about yours, so we're just going to give you some gloves, that just works. in case. And I did forget my big bowl, so we're using this little one today. Um, I just want to run through the ingredients first. So first ingredient, of course, in the chickpea salad is chickpeas. So I have this can of chickpeas here, which is the low sodium version. Um, I already opened it up and rinsed off the chickpeas. You want to get all that liquid out of there. So we don't want soupy salad. Um, and so that's what these are, the chickpeas. 
Uh, next ingredient is a tomato, so we're gonna chop this up really quick. Tomatoes aren't in season right now, it's the middle of February. Um, so, you know, ideally this would be a, like a nice summery recipe, but I felt like I needed some uh, nice summery stuff in my life after all this snow. And then um, a cucumber, we're just gonna use half of the cucumber. Green onions. Scallions would be the other word for these. So this thing, you can use the whole entire part, except for the little roots, which you can uh, either throw away, compost, or you could cut them off and stick them in a little cup of water, and they'll grow a new scallion. So be responsible, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Fun project. And then I have my parsley. This is probably more than I need, um, but I think the more the merrier for parsley, especially a lot of times um, when you buy a bunch, a recipe will call for a tablespoon or two tablespoons, and then the rest kind of sits in the fridge until it gets wilty, and yeah. then you throw it away, right? So we don't want to waste our food like that. And this has a lot of flavor, so let's use it up. Okay. And then my last ingredient, not last, but we have feta cheese here, um, which is very salty and pungent, I would say, but it adds a lot of flavor. So we're going to just use a little, little bit. And then my dressing will be red wine vinegar and olive oil. So, mainly we're going to stir everything together. And we can actually just do it. You know what? Let's okay. do half. Okay, so we don't want to use too big um, or too small of a bowl. Otherwise, it makes it really hard to properly stir things up. And then you just make a mess and get frustrated. So how do you feel about chopping? As long as I don't get hurt. <laughs> I mean, I'm fine with it. Okay, okay. We're going to do it. So... <laughs> So I'm gonna um, let you use that, that nice sharp knife. So we wanna pay nice close attention to the business end of that blade. And we're going to, you know what, I'll let you do the cucumber. You can chop that up. Into dices? Sure, yeah. But you know what, it's whatever shape you feel like you want in your salad. Oops, got a little piece of glove in there. Did? Yep, that's okay. <laughs> we'll pull it out. This isn't my best way of chopping. Yes, the gloves do make it a little bit tricky sometimes because they're usually longer and looser than your fingers are. And so one of the things about cooking, especially when we're talking about eating a lot of vegetables, is you know there can be a fair amount of chopping involved. Okay, I'm gonna yeah. get all right, that's yeah, that's glove. I saw going. another little piece underneath here somewhere. So... No glove. Nope? Okay. Okay. Alright, so now you can... Um, we'll get rid of this one. Take so that, scoop it. That's okay. Okay. It's, it's chef's choice. So, um, yeah. scoop that right into the container. Alright. Alright, let's take turns. I will do the tomato. I'm just gonna do half, okay, so we don't have too much in here. So when you're cooking at home, you want to, um, you know, do your best to use a nice sharp knife. It actually makes it easier and quicker because if you have a dull knife, you're more likely to cut yourself. And if you have too small of a knife and it takes forever, you're not going to cook vegetables too much, right? You're going to yeah. think, oh, this is a real pain in the butt and I'll just, you know, order a pizza. So we don't want to do that. Okay, and I'm going to have you do the, the scallions. Okay. You could use regular onion, whatever you have. You don't have to go out and buy a special ingredient for this. Um, actually, I really like to use red onion because then it adds another color into the mix here. Red onion is probably my favorite. That and sweet onions as well. I love putting them in my sandwich. Perfect. So you could, you know, of course, make this however you want it. If you have a, like, a really strong preference for a kind of onion, you would use that. Um, and really, this is the kind of recipe that you can make it with kind of whatever ingredients you wanted. So if you don't have chickpeas, you don't like chickpeas, you could do any different kind of bean or um, like a different vegetable. I think the key is if you have an ingredient that you need to swap out, you want to substitute another ingredient from that same food group. So you don't want to take out tomatoes and put in more feta okay. cheese. Because those are two different food groups and it changes the nutrition. 
So you would put in a, a pepper or something like that. Okay. All right. I know I said the more the merrier for parsley, but let's not know. waste it. Well, I'll, we'll definitely it will get used for something, but I want to you know over parsley us. So for this, um, I'm going to cut off kind of the bottom part. These big, you know, thick stems. So you can eat these, it's totally fine, but they don't have as much flavor and they can be a little bit tough. So I'm just gonna get rid of those and then I'll chop this up. And then whatever's left of your bunch of herbs, you can, you wanna treat it like it's a bouquet, right? So, you know, it's Valentine's Day. Instead of a bouquet of, you know, roses, we have a bouquet of leftover parsley. So. That's the way it likes. You don't want to, the last thing you want to do is leave on the rubber band it comes with and then just yeah. shove it in a drawer. It's like suffocating it. It's like yeah. choking all the life out of it and it will get wilty and then it's bad. So you take the rubber band off, put it in a glass of water and put it in the fridge or on your <laughs> dining room table, whatever floats your boat. Okay, so there you want to scrape that in. Okay. Okay. <coughs> And then our feta cheese. So let's put in, okay. And as you can see, I um, did not bring my measuring cups. Oh no. Oh no, indeed. A quarter cup, but I'm probably doing about half, which is about two tablespoons, okay. And then our dressing. So you can do olive oil and I'll do the vinegar. Okay. And I'll tell you when. So you want to put about, a tablespoon, which I'll tell you when. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead and pour it on and then we'll stir it up. That's probably good. So you want to always add less and then you can go back and add more if you need to, um, but you can't take it out once it's in there. So I want to go light on the ingredients. All right, that's it. And now we stir it up gently because of our tiny, tiny bowl here. Tiny, tiny bowl. Yeah. Whoops. Okay, yeah, maybe we should have diced those cucumbers. <laughs> it looks really nice, but it just makes it hard to stir. Very green. <laughs> it is nice and green. And the other option would be if you have a nice big bowl, put the lid on and just give it a couple good shakes. And this is the kind of recipe that as it sits for a little while, it's gonna actually start to taste better. But you don't want it to sit, you know, too long because the tomato will, and the cucumber will lose their liquid and it just gets a little bit soggy. But it would still be fine to eat. It just isn't going to look as, as appealing. All right. And so you'll notice there's something we did not add. Did you, did you notice what we didn't add that most people are adding to their food? Salt? Yes, salt. So uh, do you know why we didn't add salt? Probably this cut enough sodium sodium in it as it is. Yeah. Well, where do you, where's the sodium coming from? Which ingredient? E that part I am not so sure of. Well, it's not coming from the vegetables because vegetables are naturally very very low in sodium, um, unless it's a canned vegetable. So the sodium here, there's a little bit in our chickpeas, even though I got the low sodium there's still some in the bean. So even once you rinse that liquid off, there's still some sodium in there. And then also the feta cheese would be the saltiest part. So that's why we like it, because it adds a little nice pop of flavor, but it's, um, you don't want to overdo it. Right. Okay, so we just have a little bit here for everyone to try. All right, I'm gonna let you try that one. Okay. And I'll try this one. It's like a little face in my bowl. It's like a little face in your bowl, exactly. Chickpea on the loose. All right, let's see how good. it came out. It's good, right? Okay, and we have some for all of the people cast in the and crew. <laughs> <laughs> so, if we can flip to the next page, it has the nutrition facts. Okay, so um, this recipe makes six servings. This is probably about half of the recipe, but a serving for this, you know, purposes of this recipe is about a half a cup. It's not a ton. It's made to be 
more like a side, but you certainly could eat it kind of as a nice light lunch or a snack. Um, not a lot of calories, and if we look at the fiber, 4% of our daily value of fiber, which sounds like it's not that much. If our goal is 100% and we're getting 4% here, you know, it's kind of low, but if you're talking about a half cup serving, which most of us probably would eat more like a whole cup, um, <laughs> then you're really getting, you know, eight, maybe closer to 10% of your daily value of fiber. So again, really good for your heart because high fiber and low sodium and it tastes good. So. My heart feels good. Perfect. <laughs> That's great. So you gotta eat healthy and um, do your re regular physical activity, which we didn't talk about too much, um, but trying to be active every day. And you know, just doing these two small things, um, especially with eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, um, that's like the key to a healthy heart. If you can stick with those couple little changes, you're um, going down the right path. All right, well, was there anything else you would like to add for today? I think I covered it. Um, I would encourage everyone to check out the uh, Living Well Ellenville workshops at the Ellenville Library on Thursday mornings and the cooking classes that are going to be happening so that people can learn new recipes and um, come to us with questions. All right, well, for more information on today's topic, you can go online at eatsmartnyhv.org or you can email Katie here at KMS. 369 at cornell.edu or you can call 845-340-3990. Thank you for joining us today. It was a pleasure having you. Thank you for helping and me cook. We'll see you next time on Spotlight on World War City.